Hi, welcome to this Simply Maya Free Friday tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to cover kill fields in Maya um, for particles, or rather the lack of them, as Maya doesn't have them. Now what I mean by this is creating a field that specifically its job is to kill particles, either when they enter the field or when they exit the field. If you've used real flow before you'll know this is a K volume daemon. Um, and a lot of other Dynamics packages have this feature inbuilt. I'm going to show you how to script it into Maya. It's a bit of a hack, one I personally find particularly useful. So, we'll start by just creating a n particle emitter. Now I'm going to create one with balls just so we can see it a little better. I'm just going to hit create emitter. I'll actually ditch the grid and add some more frames in here just to work with. And you're going to see pretty much what you expect to see a rain of colored end particles drop down. You can also use this technique with traditional particles in Maya. Uh, it doesn't matter, it's the same scripting. So, um, And the scripting is very simple. Now, the problem is, traditionally within Maya, if you want to kill off particles, you either end up scripting it after they dip below a certain point in the world space, or you use the lifespan to make them live forever for a random range. And I find this either gets complicated in a hurry, it can be rather limiting, and I actually really like the concept of the kill fields I've seen in other applications. I picked up this technique many years ago, so it's been around for a while, it's been used by uh, numerous people. Um, so although it is a bit of a hack, you shouldn't really encounter too many problems with it. So what we need first, of course, is to attach a field of any description should do. Um, I'm going to use a uniform field, so I'm going to make sure I've selected my end particle in my outliner. Go up to fields and hit uniform. Now, because we want this field to uh, uh, not affect the whole scene, we'll give it a bounded box, a volume shape. I'm going to use a cube. But one of the nice things about this technique is you can actually go ahead and use any shape you want. We'll just scale that up to give us slightly better representation of this. And if you'll see, I believe the magnitude of this is set to 5 by default, so it won't have a great deal of effect. You can see a small effect. The point is, we can just show you that this is actually connected. Uh, if we put this up, you'll see. There we go. The point is we want it to have no effect, or as little effect as it's possible for it to have. So we'll put that to here. We'll put that to zero, and you'll see this now has no effect on our particles. Because we don't actually want to change the simulation, we just want to kill particles. So in order to do this, we'll need to use a little bit of scripting. It is quite easy. We're going to script the lifespan, so we'll need to go up to our end particle shape, and under its lifespan, click lifespan pp only. And then under the per particle array attributes, again under the end particle shape, hit Runtime Expression Before Dynamics, and we're going to do a little bit of scripting. This is uh, quite simple. I'm a bit rusty. It's been a while since I've scripted anything in Maya. Uh, but this is, you know, as I say, uh, about as easy as it gets. So please bear with me. Um, when you connect any field to a particle system in Maya, a hidden attribute is created called Input Force. Now, I'll just scroll through some of these so you can actually see that. But there you go, input force. Um, now, what this does is it's input force zero at the moment, I should point out. And it's input force zero because for each field you assign to the particle system, they're assigned a number. So the second field you assign will actually be number one. This makes sense if you think the first one you assigned is number zero. So we'll just get on with our scripting. We want to just say if this input force on this uniform field is greater than or equal to, we'll go for 0 0.0001. Then we want to set the lifespan pp to 0. And that should now utilize this as a kill field. And as you can see, when particles enter it, they die off. Now, you might be thinking here, if you'd have set the lifespan to 1, you'd have got the same result. And you'd probably be right. But I can move my kill field around, and the balls you can see dropping through it are just, you know, clipping the edges here. And 
I can animate it. I can also use it in the reverse direction, which is something I find particularly useful. If you're using um, particles to emit fluids, or uh, and you're using the new auto resize feature, if you get a stray particle that shoots off in a direction you weren't expecting, falls below her your ground plane, or in you know some ways when you're dealing with massive amounts of particles, they will ache act slightly unexpectedly, you will have one stray orphan particle that ends up, you know, thousands of scene units away. And if you're dealing with something like Myers or Oresize, your fluid container will now be so big it will probably just cause Maya to crash. So one of the things I like to do, and if I surround my field, you would think that no particles would be created. A few are because it takes one frame for this to be evaluated. So in that way, it's a bit of a hack. I really don't find it that much of an inconvenience, but you should be aware of it. So if I go and select the particle system again, and we'll just edit this expression, and just change our sign here. So now particles will die when they exit the field. And this is a great way when you're working even with particles can be quite uh, CPU and memory intensive when you're going up into lots of them, especially if you're playing with fluid particles and meshing and whatnot. Um, so if I was to create a scene that was this size, I can now surround my whole scene with this field. And if I uh, was to put in another field, like a wind field or a turbulence, and particles would be blown around in all directions, then this field would make sure they were killed off. In fact, if I just stick this and we'll add a I don't know let's just say a turbulence field um, let's select our fields turbulence and I make the magnitude say 500 this should now throw our particles around in every direction but as you can see no matter where they go they cannot leave the boundaries of what we have defined as our maximum scene size for particles. So if I was to do this, you will see they can't leave this predetermined area. So this is both a useful technique for killing particles off when they exit and enter a field. I hope you found that useful. Um, if you're just starting with dynamics and you're not sure why you would find this useful, um, you can take my word for it after you've been playing with them for a while. I think you'll find numerous usage for this. If you've been playing with dynamics for a while, I hope this was something new to you. And I hope you found it helpful. Simple bit of scripting. And we will be back next week with another Free Friday tutorial. If you've got comments, leave them below. Thank you.